The GoPro 10 is amazing. I bought it thinking that it would be great for making my Tesla review video, which it was, but the video quality that I got out of this thing really impressed me. And I can't believe that you can get one for less than $600. So I'll break down what this camera can do, show some of the cool footage I captured, and offer some buying advice right now. What's up, it's Be The Consumer here, talking about the GoPro Hero 10. And as someone who makes a lot of YouTube content on my channel, Be The Installer, and now here, I'm always in the hunt for the best products that can help me create content in a more convenient way. And the GoPro Hero 10 fits right in. I'm gonna go over the specs, the features that are most useful to me, and some buying advice comparing it to previous models. Make sure to drop a like on the video when you find it useful, and definitely subscribe and set the notification bell to all if you like to see cool new consumer products like Teslas and other EVs, smartphones, e-bikes, and other cool gadgets like this GoPro. And let me know in the comments what sort of content are you looking to create with something like this or any camera. Maybe I can answer some of your questions or vice versa. So let's look what you get in the box. Obviously you have the actual camera, as well as a quick start guide and instructions. You get a cool helmet mount, as well as one of the GoPro batteries, and lastly the USB-C to USB-A cable for charging the battery and transferring content to your computer. You will also need to buy your own micro SD card to record any footage. And if you want to record content at faster frame rates, you may want to look into getting a higher speed SD card since the camera will pop up a message saying your card may not be able to handle that high res footage with a cheaper one. That's exactly what happened to me with the SanDisk Ultra Plus card that I got. I even asked the dude at Best Buy if this was the case, but I should have known better since I had the same issue with my Sony FX3 cinema camera before I bought the Sony Tough Card to get amazing 4K at 120 frames per second footage that we use for the TV videos. Speaking of which, the GoPro Hero 10 has the 23 megapixel sensor that can record up to 5.3K at 60 frames per second or 4K at up to 120 frames per second, which is amazing. Plus it can record 2.7K at up to 240 frames per second for super slow-mo shots. It's got amazing built-in image stabilization and it's waterproof up to 30 feet, which I absolutely want to test out at some point. You can also live stream straight from the GoPro Quick app on your phone, so you could probably even do an underwater live stream if that's your sort of thing. You can start and stop recording on the Hero 10 using only voice commands. And best of all, it fits right in your pocket or in one of many tight spaces to get some crazy awesome shots. What more could you ask for in a $500 camera? Once you charge up the battery, you can connect the camera to your phone using the GoPro Quick app to see what the camera is seeing or if you wanna adjust the camera settings and transfer footage to your phone. You also have the option to edit the footage right on your phone, which is great for anyone who's looking to get into the creative space without investing a bunch of time and money into a full editing setup. Once the camera is on, it'll default to video mode, but you can swipe left or right on the screen or short tap the side power button to swap into photo or time-lapse modes. In time-lapse modes, you have three main options. There's time warp mode, which merges all the time-lapse photos into a smooth flowing video. Then there's regular time-lapse for when you want to set the camera in one spot and capture motion over an extended period of time. And lastly, there's night lapse for getting sweet time lapse in low light or at nighttime. In each of these modes, you can manually adjust the field of view and the resolution, as well as other basic settings to get the exact look you're going for. The photo mode allows for individual photos to be taken, but also offers a burst mode to capture up to 25 photos per second. You can adjust the type of photos taken using either the GoPro Super Photo Mode, which automatically decides on the best settings, or HDR mode for getting great contrast and bright environments. And then there's also a standard mode. Lastly, it offers a raw mode if you wanna manually adjust the color and contrast of your photos yourself later. You can also adjust the field of view to reduce that fisheye look if that's not your thing. In the video mode, you have the option to adjust the default recording modes right at the bottom. There are five modes, standard, activity, cinematic, ultra slow-mo and basic that all have different resolution, frame rates, and field of views. You also have the option to manually adjust the individual settings for any of these shooting modes by hitting the little edit button right next to each mode, and you can adjust quick options on the main screen for the frames per second, the field of view, the stabilization intensity, and the digital zoom. These quick options can be changed in the settings as well. So if there's a feature that you want to change more often, you can swap them around and make them most useful for your shooting needs. The menu is robust, but also feels straightforward at the same time compared to most mirrorless cameras where there's a menu and a quick menu and both are complicated and you gotta scroll through four more sub menus to get to a certain feature. The Hero 10 menu is well done and you can make quick and easy changes while still allowing for plenty of adjustability. So enough about the specs and the menu. Let's talk about how the footage looks. First off, professionally, I found this to be the perfect second angle camera. 
I had previously been using my Samsung Note 20 Ultra on a gimbal as a second camera, and I was really getting sick of texts and calls while filming my videos and filling up my phone memory with huge video files. Plus, you can't stick your phone in quite as many tight spots as the GoPro will fit. So the GoPro met a need and the footage looks great. I thought the second angle in my most recent unboxing of the 83 inch LG C2 up now on Be The Installer looked just as good if not better than my $1,500 Samsung smartphone. And it was so light and mobile I was able to get this sweet thumbnail from over the couch which wouldn't have happened without it. Plus we can set the GoPro down into the TV box and get some funny shots looking back up at me. Lastly for my videos, getting 4K 60 or 4K 120 frames per second shots are not always easy with a mirrorless or DSLR camera. Most of the time there's a crop factor and many times the camera will overheat during longer clips. But now I feel like I have a reliable second camera that to be honest, looks nearly as good as my $6,000 FX3 while being so tiny and convenient to use. But it's not just a great B cam. It can and should be considered as your main camera. With the great touchscreen menu, the ability to change focal lengths, live stream directly and connect to the quick app to see what the camera sees on your smartphone, you have a full creator set up in one convenient package. And now we can start talking about the many uses besides my professional YouTube videos. Since we've had this, we've taken it all over the place. I put it on a little mini tripod and got one of my buddies to record my son's football game, which turned out to be a brilliant idea, and I hope he's ready to do that full time. You can also quickly and easily play back footage to show the players what they did right and wrong, which always goes over so well. As convenient as it seems, it's usually hard to get that same kind of footage on your phone as you normally have other stuff going on. But my friend was starting and stopping for each play, and though I probably gave it to him on too wide of a focal length, the footage came out great, and I was able to zoom in on plays without losing much detail. He even caught the false start that cost us the game, but the referee wouldn't take it as evidence on the spot, which kind of sucked. Boo. I also took the Hero 10 out for an e-bike ride near the beach with my guy Jolster 4K. He had an adapter set up on the bike, so I just screwed this GoPro in and pressed record. I had so much fun riding around at Dog Beach and near OB Pier that I'm actually going to get a couple of these e-bikes for the channel to review. The footage came out buttery smooth with that hyper smooth stabilization setting engaged, and it looked like I had it on a gimbal when I was going 35 miles per hour down the street. We also stuck it on the side of a mountain bike to get some cool action shots using this sticky mount that comes in the box and a couple of zip ties just in case. The camera was securely stuck to the front fork of the bike, which got a cool low angle shot that you could never get with a traditional mirrorless or DSLR camera. We also threw it on a DJI drone just to see what sort of 4K aerial footage we could get with it. And while there are plenty of drones with their own built-in cameras, getting a drone to pick up a camera that's larger than this is not easy. So it turned out awesome, and it's just another thing you can do if you're so inclined. All of this to say that the Hero 10 is quite a solid buy. Yes, GoPro still sells the previous Hero 8 and 9 models for $300 and $400 respectively. And though those older models do offer decent specs, this new Hero 10 blows them out of the water. The Hero 8 maxes out at 4K resolution at 60 frames per second and doesn't have the same awesome front facing screen like the Hero 10. The 9 has a similar design to the 10 but has an older processor that tops out at 30 frames per second and 5.3K while still only being able to record 4K at maximum 60 frames per second. So while the 8 and 9 offer a lower entry point to get some of that sweet GoPro footage, the new Hero 10 has all the best features to keep it competitive for a long time to come. And as I said before, this Hero 10 does make for a great main camera that can really keep up with most mirrorless and DSLR options. Sony APS-C cameras go for $1,000 or more when you factor in the body and a kit lens. And for that price, you typically don't get 4K at 120 or image stabilization, let alone the small form factor and the ease of use from the menus and smartphone connectivity. Add in that it's waterproof with a million different mounting accessories, extra batteries, suction cup mounts, magnets, selfie sticks, and so on, and you have a very solid and unique camera for under $600. GoPro has come a long way since the fourth gen device that I had many years ago, and I highly recommend that you give it a shot. So are you on the fence between this Hero 10 and another camera? Please let me know in the comments below. Definitely smash the like button, and please do subscribe and set the notification bell to all, because I'm just getting started here. I'll have a review of those cool new e-bikes shortly, and an update on the Tesla Model Y performance with a breakdown of the cost of ownership, and a direct comparison to our gas-powered car. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later, or I'll see you in another time. Peace.